Much in the same way that The Purge was a really interesting premise made for a really cruddy home invasion movie, which would later be, you know, properly utilized in the second movie, is the same way you could say with Unfriended. The first movie became a horror ghost story for... If you're going to use computers and have nothing but that stuff on screen to, you know, basically tell what you need to do, why would you use it for a ghost? Why would a ghost need a computer? And why would it care what people did? And how would it, you know, gain sentience over the technological cosmos? It's not a technomancer. So, when I see stuff like, this is unbelievable, I can't believe this, the same people who are saying this about Unfriended, the second one, didn't say that for the first one. So, ghosts messing with computers we're okay with, but a group of hackers who work on the dark web, where $10 million is involved, you know, that might be a stretch of things. $10 million makes people do a lot of horrible things, especially if their morals are very, very bad to begin with. And there's a good bit of disbelief here in this actual movie. I'm not going to say it's not. But this is actually what you should take the unfriended concept to its next level. If you're going to nitpick Saw for all the craziness that happens in those films, and some people do, it would kind of be fair to do that for unfriended. But I can suspend my disbelief because... Unlike the first film, where we had a bunch of sycophants who basically were nothing but the scum of the earth, so that when they died, I didn't care one way or the other, this is actually a group of decent, well, humans. They're not good people, they're not morally uprighteous and all that good stuff, but you know what? They're decent people. They're good. And when bad stuff happens, they actually show emotions and care. And they try to use actual common sense. The problem is, they're dealing with people who have done this multiple times, you'll see, and yeah, it's pretty messed up. The dark web, I mean, they go into it into the movie, I don't need to tell you here, but there's some messed up stuff on there, and there's a reason why I never, ever even want to go near that thing. And I strongly recommend you guys don't either. There's a reason the police force is actually trying to troll that thing as much as humanly possible, and the FBI, as much as they can. The problem is, with any good connection and ability to reroutes, it's tough to do. And what they do in here is kind of messed up, but honestly believable. Especially given some circumstances. Now, there's a bit of disbelief here, because all these people are spread across, well, somewhat in a small city, but you got one guy who's all the way in the UK. So how they get to him is a little bit meh, but at least they, you know, make it realistic. So... The good of this movie does come from the performances of the actual characters. They're good. They have their moments. It's kind of heartbreaking watching them go through this stuff, because when one of them dies, they actually show basically all the stages of human emotion. So, you know, take what you can. The really downside is kind of the kills, if I'm being so blunt. Some of the stuff... Look, if you're going to try to get away with this, there's a lot better way than literally some of the ways they go about. Like, this, basically the last two kills, I'm going to say, are kind of realistic, if you don't mind me saying. Mostly due to the fact that, well, one did a good job making it look legit, and the other, mm, you'll see. But, it's kind of tough to fake an accident when someone gets pushed into front of a subway, which that's not a spoiler, somebody sees that, or stuff happens, like... This stuff happens in the movie, I don't want to spoil it, because it's actually one of the few ones I don't want to spoil, because it's that good. <clears throat> Still a little caught up in my throat. So, really, it comes down to this. If you are a fan of horror films and suspense, go get your money's worth out of this one. Because suspense comes from the lack of control... Well, suspense and fear really comes from a lack of control, a lack of being in control of a situation. There's a reason why people are scared of people like, you know, Jason, Freddy, Michael. All those guys are unstoppable forces of nature that we can't stop. And if we can't control or we can't redirect, that's a scary situation. There's a reason why people are scared of drowning because you can't control air while in water. People are scared of thunder and lightning because you can't control thunder and you can't control... Okay, you can kind of control lightning with redirection and metal, but we're not dealing into crazy science fiction here. So... This movie actually gives you that feeling of suspense and dread. You can kind of tell what's going to happen, and you want it not to happen. You want to be able to see these characters live and, you know, 
have it be a happy ending. Yeah, sadly, that ain't the case. Yeah, that ain't much of a spoiler, guys. Anyone who's seen any films like these, especially found footage, when is it ever, ever ended good for the people, except Looper? Looper is the one exception I will make, because that was not so much of a found footage film as it was a let's get superpowers in the genre of a found footage film. I must choose, do I want to suffocate in my car, or do I want to get a little wet? <laughs> Clearly, the people above are telling me, No, this review shall end. You have said your piece. It is over. And that's basically it, guys, before this starts getting worse. Unfriended is an actually decent horror film. One you don't need to see in the big screen. Definitely a Redbox and Netflix rental. It's not going to be on any of my top ten list, good or bad. And for what it was, a matinee, I enjoyed it. So... When I looked, there was three films I wanted to see this week. Unfriended, <laughs> The Equalizer 2, and Mamma Mia 2. One because I enjoy the film, and the other because it's a sequel to a really bad chick flick. What are you going to do? So, apparently, that's what gets the highest rate on Rotten Tomatoes, is Mamma Mia 2, followed by Unfriended, and then Equalizer 2. I would have sworn that would have been flipped, but we'll see. So... I got Mamma Mia 2 and Equalizer 2 coming up, and who knows, maybe I might actually go see Hotel Transylvania 3. Before my car gets flooded, as always, I'm Kevin Riley signing off, and I'll see you all next time. Later.